Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. And coming up here on today's show, I am interviewing Raiders starting right tackle, Jermaine Illuminor. And one, one of the biggest things that I want you all to do is show him a little bit of love. Spam 72 right now down in the comments section because I don't know if Jermaine's at a nightclub in Las Vegas. Looks like he's in his sauna. He's laughing it up. Everybody give a huge shout out to Jermaine Illuminor. Dude, we appreciate the fact that you're showing up to today's show, man. Much love to you. The nation is excited and I'm excited to have you. We usually do show sometimes without a shirt on. We're usually chugging some beer bongs. <laughs> I'll tell you this. After this live interview, I'll come back and I'll take my shirt off then. Hey, that's that's definitely fine with me. I'm used to take my shirt off, so it's, you know, it's just something I'm used to now. Hell yeah, man. I appreciate that. I saw you uh, went to Lackawanna College, and myself, yeah. I'm actually from Danville, Pennsylvania, which is the 570 as well, so like that's my stomping grounds. So I saw really? Lackawanna, I was like, man, that's really cool. And then I saw you went to high school at Morris in Denville, New Jersey. One yeah. of my best buddies, he's from Rock Rockaway? Well, no, what is it? Rockaway, yeah. Rockaway, and then I went to college at Centenary, which is maybe like 30 minutes away from that. Yeah. So I know where that is. It's dope. You know, I, I, to be honest, I know a lot about you, which probably creeps you out a little bit. I do my homework. Nah, it's just me. There's, there's, I've had some really weird people. While I've been playing football, just bring on my entire like past, like growing up in London and playing rugby and then playing soccer and then moving over here and like wrestling in high school and know my exact record and you know so I've had I've had some very interesting people like well, come into my life. So. I heard today is actually like National Tea Day over in London. So I mean, if you want to get really? weird, we can bring out some tea bags. Have you ever been tea bag hey, live? I'm a I'm a big tea guy, so you know. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. So here's how this is going to work, Jermaine. I got a few questions for you, and then okay. you can just answer them however you wish, and we're going to keep this thing rolling. So my first question is, what position will you play the most snaps at this season? You and I have discussed left guard, right tackle, right guard. What position do you think you're going to play the most this season? Um, I would assume right tackle, but at the same time, I would say whichever position they need me at the most. You know, my entire career, um, I prided on the fact that I can play multiple positions. Like last year, I started a game at left tackle when Cole went down for a day for a game. Um, right guard, week three um, against Tennessee. So, you know, I would love to play right tackle, but at the same time, if they need me to play another position because that's a position that I need and, you know, we, we need that position then I'll go ahead and do that. You know, my thing is I just want to be on the field playing wherever that is, wherever it is, you know. I think uh, one of my favorite things about you personally is your versatility. I studied a lot of film on you when you were with the New England Patriots, with Carmen Brasillo, and that's why I was so excited that the Raiders were able to bring you mm -hmm. back. And you were probably one of the top players that I defended a lot because for whatever reason – People like to rip apart the Raiders' offensive line. And overall, I thought you guys played at a lot higher level than what you were getting credit for, especially you. So I want to see it right tackle this season. And if you have to move to right guard to make the team better, you know, I'm always a team first guy. We're going to be doing videos every single day, live all the time for every single pick. And in fact, we actually get the picks before you see them on television. So if you're a diehard Raider fan, I want you to hit that subscribe button. I want you to turn on those notifications. That way, you never miss a thing. All right, Jermaine Illuminor back was at Zook, and now he's at some other nightclub. So what's the draft like for you as a player? And the reason why I'm asking this question is because, you know, watching it, you're watching it, obviously, because you want a player that helps out the team. But then you also have to be watching the question or watching the draft in terms of, is this guy potentially someone that's going to battle with me at my position? So how do you watch the draft? I would say that as a vet, you know, going to my seventh year, there's something that opened me, and it was my coming out of college when I was playing the NFLPA game. I remember talking to Jackie Slater, and he was like, yeah, you know, I played in the NFL for 20 years. I was a high level starting right tackle. And the thing that people always ask me is, how did you react to the Rams trying to replace you every single year? And he said that, you know, those rookies would come in and talk a big game, 
and they would act like they were gonna take his spot and they never did because of the work he put in and just the type of guy he was. So to answer that question, I would say that you watch it and you know, in this profession, you know they're trying to replace you every single year just because you know it's about money. They don't really want to, you know, they want guys because it will help the team fill out more. Um, and so every single year, there's going to be some sort of competition. It doesn't matter how good you play the year prior. And that definitely is something for me. It doesn't matter how good I played last year. It doesn't matter who it is. I'm going to have to come into this year in OTAs, minicamp and training camp and show that I'm the guy whether that's a right guard, right tackle, it doesn't matter. I'm going to have to show that I belong on the field because Josh always preaches that the best players are going to play and you prove that you're the best player in your position in training camp and competition breeds better players. And, you know, that's what it's going to come down to, me doing my job at the highest level possible and showing that I'm the guy week in and week out to go out there and, you know, protect Jimmy. Hey, protecting Jimmy. That's, uh, that's what I like to hear. I know there's a bunch of... We'll call them adult stars that are probably really happy to hear you say that as well. My next question is this. What are you doing to limit timely penalties this season? Now, I don't want you to get mad at me for saying that, but no, I, I would no, say the I'm biggest, mad at myself. I think the biggest way that you can take that next step, and I think that you're nodding your head because you agree with me here, 10 penalties last season. You did everything at a very, honestly, at a pretty high level. What are you going to do, though, to limit the penalties? Because I see right now you're sweating your ass off at least – I don't really want to see from the neck down. You can keep it there. But you told me that you're trying to cut weight from going from 335, which is, I think, what you played at last year, down to 320. So I can see that you're doing that. What's, how are you going to limit the penalties? Um, so my weight is actually really good right now. I'm exactly where I want to be. I just do the sauna because of the health benefits and just I love staying in here. I would say the biggest thing for me is being more locked in mentally. Um, you know, just whether that's the snap count, um, like running the play exactly how it's meant to be ran. You know, there's a couple times maybe I had like a another man downfield or, you know, that block in the bag against Kansas City, the Monday night game, you know, just being more locked in For sure. to the game plan and what I have to do. And then that way, you know, I just be able to go out there and play freely. It's it's definitely a mindset thing and um, like a mentality thing that you have to go out there and know that you have to play the game cleanly so you can avoid those penalties. And some of the penalties are just bonehead decisions on my point, on my part, you know, you. like that Tennessee, we're on the goal line and I had a full start because, you know, Tennessee shouted out our cadence. I can't, you know, make any excuses. Just as me, I have to be more locked into the game plan. So I think that's the biggest thing, just being more locked in in the game plan, knowing what we have to do week in and week out. And then knowing that, you know, Oh, I don't have to jump real quick off the line to get the, the guy I'm going to block or in the run game, have my hands inside and making sure I have the right term technique. That way I can avoid those penalties that are costly at times. I got you. So this next question may be a little bit personal, but, you know, I don't know. I look at Raider Nation as family. So my question to you is this. What is the most people that you've ever banged in front of? If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's an inside joke here on the Raiders Port. When we get a $100 Super Chat, we scream at the top of our lungs, bang, and we just got one from Sergio Orozco! Bang! Nah, man, I'm just playing. I was, he like paused for a second. That was the part where I thought. I was thinking to myself, I was like, wait, I, is this like some sort of fan lingo? Like, <laughs> am I, am I going to? I want to make sure I'm like right here, you know? Like, so, I don't want to say something stupid. So, Jermaine, my question to you is this. If I scream out Sergio's name again, will you scream bang with me? You know what? Let's do it. You only live once. Come on. Let's go. Sergio Orozco! Bang! bang! <laughs> <laughs> so the nation, man, they were excited. And for YouTube, like, just being full transparency here, Right when the show started, Sergio sent in a $200 super chat. He was excited. We have another diehard Raider fan. His name is Patrick B. He sent in $200. We had another Raiders fan, uh, Hellcat Q, which I actually have his jersey on right now. And if somebody, if somebody sends in a 100, if I have their jersey on, that means I got to do a boot. So that's three beers. So honestly, I might have to join you in that sauna after this, but this has been a hell of a live show. Bottom line, the nation was excited that you were here. We'll get back on track real quick. 
Do you believe Jimmy Garoppolo will be a better fit in McDaniels' offense than Derek Carr was? I think that Derek was a great fit. Derek's a great player. And I think Derek's going to do amazing things in New Orleans. Jimmy has been in this offense. He was drafted into this offense. So essentially, you could agree and say Jimmy is a better fit just because he's familiar with it. Okay. And it's a tough turn. You know, I was, I've been in this offense for multiple years now. And I remember my first year in New England, I did not get a grip of this offense until my second year in this offense. It's a lot to learn. And you got to give it out to Derek because Derek knew everything. He was out there. He was in the building damn near all day grinding he was there on the field trying to lead us he did lead us did as great of a job as he could have he's like i said he's a hell of a player i think he's one of the best in the league i think he's gonna do amazing things in new orleans um you know jimmy had, like like i said has a slight advantage just because he's been in this offense before he was there for how many years in new england and now he's running the same exact offense so you know that's the only um advantage i would give him just because like I said, he's been in this offense, and if you've been in it before, it's not too hard to pick up. But if it's something you're learning on the go, like think about it. Derek had a whole off, literally just a whole offseason to learn an offense. It took me damn near two years to learn. So yeah, like I said, both of them are hell of, like hell of QBs. They're two of the best in the NFL. I'm excited that I get the opportunity to play with. I had, I had the opportunity to play with both of them, and that's just a blessing to me because they're both amazing people, amazing players and they can like Derek did his thing here he's gonna do his thing in New Orleans and Jimmy's gonna come here and elevate us as well so I'm really excited so you don't have to answer this question one of the things that I do here on this show is to just get fan interaction I, I to be honest if you saw a dude talking to himself on the side of the street I might be like all right this guy might be a little crazy so when I do this show I interact with the nation I ask questions so if you want to answer it fire away if not it's all good nation who's the better quarterback if you think it's Derek Carr type DC if you think it's Jimmy Garoppolo go with JG down in the comment section your answer Jermaine if not we'll go to the next question I would say they're both amazing in their own right <laughs> good answer all right so how about this one on a scale from one to ten one being you're not confident at all ten being you are very confident how confident are you in Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler to get the Raiders to achieve the ultimate goal, which is a Super Bowl? I would say very confident. They've done it before in New England, and Josh is a hell of a coach, and Dave is a hell of a GM. Um, I wouldn't judge them based on one year. You have to give people more time in order to get their guys in and run the program how they want it to be ran. You know, they like to say, like, I like to say, Rome wasn't built in a day, and if it was, then I'm sure millions of millions of people would have to work on that. You know, it's hard to build – a successful franchise and I believe in them as much as someone could believe in them because they believe in me, you know, so I have to give that back. Their belief in me helped me have the season I did last year and it helped me gain the confidence I needed to go out there and play good. And, you know, I believe in them just as much, if not more. My next question is, and I think this might be the last one, maybe one more after that. So Josh Jacobs, star running back, led the NFL last season in total yards. My question for you is this. If Jacob says that he's not going to play underneath the franchise tag, if you were McDaniels, if you were Ziegler, if you had the opportunity, would you either extend him or would you say, I want you to play under the tag, or would you trade him? What What would you personally do? Um. Well, Josh, he's my guy. I love him to death. He definitely helped us look great last year. He's the best running back in the NFL. And I think that that's a guy that you need to be a successful team. I love him to death. Everyone in that locker room loves him to death. We all know what he brings to the field. Like I said, he's the best running back in the NFL. And, you know, I think that year two in this offense, he's going to go stupid. I think it's going to be ridiculous. So More than 2,000 yards? What was that? More than 2,000 total yards. My fantasy team's listening. You know, I think that I can't make any promises, but like I said, we're going to go out there every single day or every single game and block our asses off and do what we need to do in order to open up holes for him and help him have the best year of his career. And like I said, I love playing with him. He elevated all of us on the offensive line. He ele elevated us as an offense. And just having a guy like that in the backfield, like I would talk to multiple guys around the NFL and they'd be like, you know, he's a hell of a guy. Like game planning for him is hard because he can run you over. He can juke you out. He can outrun you. He can do everything he wanted in a running back and more. And like I said, he's the best in the NFL. So 
I want to I want to keep playing with him because, like I said, he's the best in the NFL, and you want a guy like that in your backfield because if you can run the ball, you can throw the ball even better, and we can run the ball with him for sure. All right, Jermaine, I actually got one more question for you, and then I'll let you off for the live show, and then you can hop back on a little bit later when you get cleaned up. So right. give me your projected starting offensive line for the Raiders this season. Let's say Sunday, week one, it's tomorrow. What do you think would be the Raiders' starting offensive line this season? I've said the same exact line we had going into Kansas City the last game. You know, I have to take some – I. I need to be a better tackle and help the guard more next to me. I need to be more selfless, and that's something I plan on doing this year. I think the better the tackle is, the more he can elevate people around you. And I, I've know, I know a bunch of great tackles around this league, and they say that their play will help elevate the guy next to them, and I want to take that role on on being that guy who will help elevate the guy next to me. And Bars is a hell of a player, and I think that I need to do a better job helping the people around me be better and the way that I do that is by playing better and elevating my game, which will help elevate the people around me as well. So I would say the same exact line we had last year. Fair enough. I think they're I'm, – I'm curious to see what they do with Alex Bars at right guard. For me personally, I'm going to go Colton Miller, Dylan Parham. I think that you're going to end up starting Andre James. I think Natane Moody might be somebody at right guard unless you draft somebody and then – I, there's this guy, his name's Jermaine Illuminor. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. I think he could end up starting at right tackle. But Jermaine, man, um, I I appreciate the hell out of this interview. I also appreciate the fact that you didn't drop your phone because if you would have, my YouTube channel probably would get deleted and then, I don't know, then i got to find something else to do. So. It would get deleted or it would get even more followers. I, I would go with the later. So. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you this. I am on another show. It's kind of like Locals is what we call it, and that's uncut. So... If you want to get some OnlyFans stuff going over there, we can uh, we can talk afterwards. <laughs> no, seriously, brother, I appreciate it. When you get cleaned I... up a little bit, come back here on the live show. I know a bunch of people are excited. In fact, Jenny Garcia just sent in a $100 super chat, so you want to give her a bang, and then we'll get the hell out of here? Let's do it. Jenny Garcia! Bang! Bang. <laughs> All right, man. Everybody, spam 72 down in the comment section. Show Jermaine Illuminor some love. For those of you that are watching this live, he will be back on the show in a little bit, probably when he puts on a shirt and some pants. For those of you that are watching this, maybe on a later date, cheers to you all. And remember, this is why you subscribe to the Raiders Report. Hit that big red button and turn on those notifications. That way you never miss a thing.